why brand on purpose? So we hear all the time uh, the purpose of a business is to make a profit, right? Well, of course that's to make a profit. But if that's all we're doing, it's meaningless. We want to brand on our purpose. And I'm going to bring my hand to this other side here. Um, before we go there, we want to be able to be very crystal clear on what is a brand. So you will hear people say, we need some promotional branded products. We need branded products. And that means get my logo on a mug or my logo on a pen or shirt. Um, and, uh, or the three major automotive brands in the news today, what do they mean by a brand? So a brand is the compilation of what people experience when they work with your business, your product or service. So it's what they see, hear, feel, touch, experience, all of that with the tangible and the intangible pieces of your business. So I want you to really think about your brand, your business, what are the tangible things I can control? What are the intangible things I can control? And what are those other things I can? We want to manage as best as we can all of those. So that's being purposeful and intentional about your brand, and it is a challenge. So we want to make that easier. Um, I want some audience participation. What do you think? What do you think? McDonald's, very good, those two curvy yellow french fries. If we could take a vote, your how you would vote for McDonald's, up or down, on a scale of one to 10, one to five being unfavorable, six to 10 being favorable, I'd like you to raise your hand if you would give McDonald's a one to five unfavorable. Are you talking about their brand or the food? Just your what you think about McDonald's. Mm. Look around this room. I think that's pretty low. Okay, a six to ten. Hold them high if you give you give them a six to ten. You are a McDonald's fan. We have three people in this room. So that is the brand equity of McDonald's. There's not a French fry or a happy meal in this room, but we're talking about McDonald's, and it's not very strong. So those people in the corporate offices, that's what they're thinking about is their brand when you leave McDonald's. So how can they manage it? How can they improve it? So you may have a bad experience with McDonald's. You may have heard something. Maybe it was good because Ronald McDonald's was a blessing to your family or your kids always happy with your toys. Whatever it is, they're working to manage that brand and they will not. You ever see an old McDonald's? An old, old. Yeah, and old McDonald's is beat up over the you don't because they make their franchise owners remodel three hundred thousand dollars remodel. And you're a franchise owner, you signed up for this because we are going to have a forever brand. When we introduce coffee, we are going to make sure we know how to do coffee. That is managing the tangible and also the intangible pieces. So we're going to get into that for your your business. Let's look at some of these. We're all here because we have a unique product or service. We have a solution and we've got to get it out to the marketplace. So we need a logo, we need a website, all these sales collateral. We're going to get into other things, operations, sales processes. I'm throwing all of these out there. Your mission, your team and talent, who you're going to hire, and your purpose. It's all in there somewhere. This is how people are managing their brand. And it looks a little strange, doesn't it? It looks a little chaotic. And I need to have people say this is overwhelming. These are the tangible and intangible pieces of your brand. So how can we pull this together? We want to give you a picture, a tool that you can use to be more intentional, purposeful about how you manage these pieces. So we're going to liken your brand to a tree. What gives a tree its strength in the storm? its roots, the foundation of that tree, and it's all funneled through the trunk, one single source to get up and keep that tree alive. So what are the roots? What's the foundation of your brand? What's the central piece? Can everybody see this okay? No, you can't back there. No. Is it the lights? Is it? No, it's just small print. 
Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll take it. That's his purpose, I guess. <laughs> Your purpose is the central. Why you do what you do. Why you do what you do. Uh, and we'll get into the purpose more because that's pretty central. And then your mission is what you do to fulfill that purpose. You could talk to a number of different, a hundred different business coaches and some would say you don't need a purpose statement or and a mission statement, that's fine. But you need to know very clearly what your purpose is. And what your, yeah, what your purpose is and what your mission is. And your vision, how are you gonna change the world because of what you're doing? Your core values, core values are so important we all have them. Just take time to write them down. <clears throat> Core values, your commitment to your team, and your commitment to your customers. How you're gonna act and behave in this world. Core values must be tied to behaviors. And then your brand promise. Your brand promise is that unique thing that you deliver consistently. You can measure it, you've got, you know, I'll just send you the slide. If you ask for a slide, I don't want you to be busy right now. You think about your business, okay? Put a clock here. So I guess we'll, we'll send you this. I mean, a lot of these slides aren't worth anything. They're just pictures. But um, we'll send you this grand tree, some of this stuff. You know, okay. And then your key differentiator. And we want you to think about this for a minute. We could talk an hour on each one of these at least. But your key differentiator is to shoot for three. What are three things that make us, set us apart? And one of those we want you to be your tiebreaker. This is, if you're comparing us to this company, you have to have this and you have this, you don't have this. And it might just be your process. It might just be that the inspiration you give to a video when you work with them, or the care that you're doing their tasks. Sometimes it's just a very simple thing that doesn't cost extra, but it's, it's a part of your process. It's just not easily topped that. So for example, we were doing logos for years. You didn't, before computer, you needed to call a graphic designer to do a logo. Then computers came around and everybody could make a logo, right? So we, we well they can't, but they try. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna, we're gonna have to level up. We're gonna have to keep going. We're not easily topped to make it or add more value to what we do. And now you've got these, pieces, they inspire and they inform everything in your business. Your hiring practice, your marketing, what's going up on your website, all of these things, I like to think of them as the leaves on the tree because they're just, um, they're, they're, they're this and this and this and this and this. When people come to us, they say, hey, we need a website. Okay, let's talk, well, what do you want to put on that website? I don't know. Or we need a brochure, I don't know. Well, can we use some coupons going to? A lot of you are in service business and you go to those little flyer things they want to sell to your home, they'll say, well, well, can you have a call to action? What do they usually say? A coupon, a deal? Don't do that. You don't need to be giving deals. You're not a pizza place. So, we, if you notice, pizza places have trained us to need, where's my coupon, right? You, that's not you. You're too valuable for a coupon. All right, so now you've got these foundational pieces. What do you do with them? You put them on what we call the brand blueprint. This is just a PowerPoint template. You, you can build this on a Word doc or whatever you want to do. You get it on a single page so that you can get everyone in your organization on a single page. It helps you align everything that you're doing. You can give it to your HR person, you can give it to everybody in management. Clarice, right? Sure, sorry. So you think about how you're bringing different medical facilities together. How are you gonna bring unity with this? Everybody needs to know our core values. Everybody needs to know our purpose statement. When we answer the phone, this is how everybody answers the phone. We got a customer issue, this is how we do it. So you keep that alignment because that a business bill, all about dump the dust. Start with dump. Marty Neumeyer is the grandfather of, of branding. And he said that trust is the ultimate shortcut to a buying decision and that is the goal of our brand we want to build trust so if we say this is what we do we better do it and we better deliver it so we want to be unique we want to be remembered for the value that we bring and that's going to help connect us with those customers who want that unique thing to 
Today's one a cheap, cheap video. I don't know how to spell it. I'm like, okay, well, that's nice. You know, we go the extra mile for this, right? All right, so put it out there. Just get it down. It's not carved in stone. Try it. Just try it. Make it, get it working. And then we did our core values many years ago. We were like, well, you know, we need to say something about this. So when you're using it with your people, you can get creative. Let me say something about core values. Um, I want these sheets on this one. So we got this in there, folder. Yeah. Um, Dina Dwyer has Values, Inc. Uh, it's a great book. She worked with franchises, and she proves that businesses that work on their values work and infuse them in a company and make them a central part of their business sell higher in the marketplace. They have higher value just by living by their values. She also has great examples of how to use them. We have team huddles and we have core value shout outs. So that, hey, shout out to so-and-so. This is our um, uh, be real. You had you were struggling with that thing. You really came straight to us. You didn't grumble about it. You said, hey, I'm, I'm having trouble with this. I don't understand it. Shout out to, to Abby for doing that. We really appreciate that communication. So that's how we make every day in a core value or in a huddle, someone's got to do a core value shout out. So there's a ton of ways you can do. We do core value here. Do you? Yes, we of do. Of course. I was yeah. the first winner. You mean you say that? We do that. What do you mean? Our core value is the acronym CHEER. Committed and driven, honest customer service, mm -hmm. uh, accountability, integrity, mm -hmm and responsibility and every month we choose an employee and and we just give what the value they exude and i think that it encourages your your staff to do better exactly exactly i'm glad you brought that up about your team because the people we have working for us with us those are the people we really need to invest in so working through core values and your purpose if we're just here to make money, we're just gerbils on a wheel. We, right? Well, that's all there is. I, I, no, that's good. <laughs> so you ain't going nowhere. So I, I believe God put us on this planet. Each one has a unique value and a purpose to fulfill. So, so if we're not doing, you know, people complain about. Um, this young generation, I heard a woman at a large event, she was a, um, on a panel, an executive for a major healthcare system, and she was complaining about this generation coming out of college and they just want to fulfill their purpose, they want to do meaningful work, and I just go, come on, honey, work 10 or 15 years, and then you'll find your purpose, and the whole audience laughed, and I thought that was really sad, <laughs> because I've, I've heard, oh, you know, all the staff, the people are working for the weekend, they're just doing this job because they've got to. I heard in a Soviet prison camp, they had a concentration camp, they had workers, they told them, and they were ill-equipped, you're building this road, and when you take her out, you're building this road, and it takes this, and you're done. This video, you scan it, it's dark, it's called No Reply. How many videos, how many views? 51 million, something yeah. like that. It was 2009, it's old. It's so old. 
Um, it's a TEDx talk. You just want to watch it. It talks about why you need to know what, what you're doing, why you're doing it. It puts the passion. And when we've got passion in our business, we can do the hard thing. Your business owner, you're doing the hard thing. You're facing rejection. You got all those things I've had on that board right to look at. You're doing the hard thing. It is very hard to get a successful business up and running that's sustainable and growing. It's a massive challenge. So you've got to know why you're getting up and on this side of the morning. Why are we doing all this? So we've established that people make our brands. Our businesses are not going to do nothing without people. And we've established that people need purpose to let the brand on purpose. I really want to give this another shot because we've worked with business owners and you know at the end of a whole session they'll say, I'm not understanding the difference between mission and purpose. That's cool. And uh, let's let's take a little illustration. If this gray strip represents a road, everybody's going on this road, and then this gray strip represents a path. That's your business that you're taking. It's what you're doing. It's your mission. It's what you're doing. You chose this path. Now, that sun represents your vision. That vision is the impact that you're making in the world. It's where you're headed. We need to know where we're headed. What's the vision? And when we talk about vision, there's always for sure revenue goals, scaling, we want to get here, we want to get these kind of customers. But when you think about what's the impact going to be? So for example, we have a uh, orthodontist who's a client, and we're talking about his vision, and he goes, I want to get this much more in sales. I'm going to tell my staff, we're doing, we did this in sales last year, I want to get this in sales. He got a bunch of really sweet, big-hearted dental hygienists and assistant out there. And are they really going to care about your sales goals? But you guys talk about smiles all the time. You talk about the confidence it gives a kid or an adult to finally have a full smile. You talk about the impact that that makes in their life. What if you said, we want to do 200 more smiles this year? And if we do 200 more smiles, we've got 200 more families that are happier. If we have 200 more families that are happier, what's the outcome in our community? What's the outcome in these schools that they're going to? Do you guys think we could make 200 more smiles this year? Maybe we could even get a little uh, scale in the back or a little chart in the back to break in and show them, hey, we got more smiles than we did last year. You see the difference in that vision than just a sales goal? So what is the change? And here's a thing to think about. If my business gets wiped off the planet of the earth tomorrow, it doesn't exist. What's the void? What are those people we serve not? <laughs> they need you. <laughs> okay, so you might have people saying you got these little thin lines, those rumble strips, those are your core values, because people are prone to wander for the next shiny thing, or we've got this crisis, so we got to uh, do this. Well, core values keep us in line. And we have stories of clients who are like, oh, man, it was so good that we got our core values all agreed upon by our executive team. Because I was the youngest on that board, and they wanted to do this thing that was not going to serve us well. It was not part of our core values. And I was able to say, hey, you guys, four months ago we agreed to these core values. I still want to do that thing. And they all had all these older partners that I was shaking their heads. Now you guys are here. Yeah, you're right. We won't do that. So our core values keep us in line. They're critical. Our goals, we want to keep in mind, our goal is not the end. You've got your vision goals, just they're measurable steps. This is our goal. It's a one month goal, it's a three month goal, shorter goals are better than we want to still do the one year, three year, five year, right? But we accomplish more a shorter attainable goal. Now, here we are. Why this path? Why are you taking this path? Why not any other path? Why are you spending all your time, sweat, blood, heart, tears? on this business. When you know your passion you and you can inspire others with it, this is why we're doing it. This is the world needs us because of this. You can bring other people on board. 
fulfill what Mel was talking about, that desire for staff that want to work with you, and you can inspire customers, they get it. Those people who share that, those values and that purpose, they, they align with it, they gotta work with you, right? You, you guys know. You hear about a business that did something trash, you're like, I don't need to go to that store, I'm about five minutes out of my way to go to the next one, right? So you can help them get on board, get excited, and run toward that vision. They can find that fulfillment in their work. It's a beautiful thing. So I hope you see the difference between purpose and mission and how those are important. If you want to craft a purpose mission statement, you want to put those in together to keep them simple and clear, that's great. We will work on getting a purpose statement because it's non-disruptive, and we're going to talk about that too. So one of the things you got to know is it's right there. you got the treasure right there. You do not have to go searching hard for it. Just look within what got you here? We got three questions on that sheet. What do you do with excellence? And you know, another thing is you could talk to 50 coaches and they have, some have four questions, some have seven, you got have five quadrants. I just think three are very simple and it'll get you to your purpose statement. What, is, what do we do with excellence? We, we can teach this. People trust us. We are subject matter ex experts. What do we do with excellence? And then who do we do it for? Who do we do it? Who, who are the people we do it for? <laughs> I ended with it last time. I got my daughter to say, Mom, I got my son. Okay, um, so who are we serving? And then what is the transformation that we make in their life? So we're going to, oh, shoot, that's the second. We got a carpet cleaner. We got um, another presentation, Audi. They do cleaning service and they shine. They got a mission to give people who are um, there, uh, they've got a record or they they messed up their life big time. Matt Bazell wants to give them a second chance. He wants to get them into a career, start them out big and clean. So he has this desire to help them shine. He's a Christian, he wants them to shine from what that in, have a new light, new hope, and then he wants every space they work to shine, every every place to make a difference. So we're making every place we where we where we go shine in our people and in our, our services. So that's his and his core values spell shine too. Yeah. So look within. Um, also, if you feel like you just landed here, I just landed here. I just married an electrician. I married a graphic designer. And what? How did I land here? Do I have a purpose in this? I think you do. When you look deep and find, you can find a purpose in what you're doing. Why did you start video photography? Why clean? What is it about you? And often when it's in the owner, you find it. You find that purpose. Why did I get here? I don't think there's any mistake. I think we can use the, the, the place we land. And it can be a really positive <coughs> thing. So look within. And then if you've been in a company for a while, look at your roots. At the roots of your business. So a lot of you have younger companies, some of you have been around longer. Um, I think to look at what you what you did to get started, what was important in that, what triggered it, your roots can be a key element of your purpose, finding your purpose. You guys know all about purpose. You can try to look at your team and right? help people find purpose. So you can give me a score at the end. <laughs> I find that off of that. So let me give you a cautionary tale, real life cautionary tale. Uh, many, many years ago, remember people had to hire a photographer? Well, George Eastman, put that up there, of Kodak, he invented shelf stable film. And then he needed to invent the camera so people would buy his film. So he disrupted an industry. People now could afford a camera and they could afford the film. George Eastman was a tech into technology, and he built a technology company. <laughs> you know, Kodak had hundreds of patents, hundreds of patents. Kodak was with NASA on the moon taking pictures. Kodak developed touchscreen technology. That's shocking. And Kodak developed the DSLR digital camera. And when it was brought, I forget what year, when it was brought years ago, decades ago, to the executive team, 
if we can take pictures digitally and share them electronically? They said, nah, it'll chew into our film sales. So how many of you are old enough to remember had the Kodak film? Mm -hmm. The Kodak film. If you weren't using it, I was like, now you can buy a Hallmark card. You're gonna buy something else. <laughs> well, what, what happened? Kodak went bankrupt. And Rochester, New York became a ghost town. Kodak's roots were a technology company. They forgot their purpose. So a company named Apple introduced their DSLR technology in Japan with digital cameras. So if Kodak would have stayed with its purpose, we would probably be FaceTiming our Kodak phones. It wouldn't be any of you guys. It's so important. There's my Kodak phone. It, it's so important to know why are we doing what we're doing? That's existential. So that, when we get to this, this is the stuff that builds a sustainable brand. This is what you can get excited about. I went to a, um, back before all the shutdown, we had a, a friend of the family, she was getting married, I don't know if you're ever gonna make a video, Ty and Silverdome used to have these wedding scenes, oh my word, like miles and miles of vendors and photographers and all kind of everything for a wedding. And I just kind of curious, I'm going to every single video ever right now. And video and <coughs> I don't so why am I what why why would I go do that? Oh we do weddings and um we have good packages. Oh okay thank you. And I, I said, well we do weddings, you know we do a lot of portraits, right? Act one after another blur and I went up to some of them and I said so what do you tell me about you? Oh my word, we love brides. We love the event. We love capturing that moment. We're all over it. She totally stood out to me. It was that passion, that enthusiasm, and that is attractive, right? So um, when we got our purpose statement, you, you craft a purpose statement. Well, notice the two out of the three questions is about others. Isn't that interesting? Well, why aren't we, why are we in business? We can forget, we have one of our core values is to serve people because we can forget we did a project, a project board said, I'm gonna get this done, I'm gonna get this done. There's a, there's a business owner on the other end and they have goals and they have a vision. We've gotta remember we're serving people. That's what matters. So when you get your purpose statement out, share it. Share it, share it, share it, share it often. As business owners, you are chief repeating officers. I now dub you chief repeating officers. How many times, you ever raise your kids? How many times do you have to tell a kid to say please and thank you before they say please and thank you? Ooh, that's and that's limitless, right? How do you ask? We, it's the same with our teams. We repeat, we repeat, we repeat. We're doing this because we're this is what why we do what we do. So uh, we're gonna show you Kirk's team, but I was talking with the CEO um, the other day and he said, uh, one of the partners, and he said, he said, we're talking about your purpose again. And he goes, yeah, I know these guys are good. I don't know, I don't know what guy he's talking about. I don't know what he's talking about. Really? So he walked past that guy who sampled that new course. He walked past him. He said, hey, you know, you do a great job. You know where this is going. This is probably gonna end up on a bus in Texas. You know, that bus is gonna get some lots of work. She's gonna feed her family. Thank you. Thank you. Now he sees the peak place in, in the whole picture. The, 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 the gift we can give, how much does that cost? Nothing. It costs a little bit of our soul, a little bit more effort, a little bit more of our time. And then measure it. You wanna measure it. Um, we set up metrics all the time in our business. So how are our sales going? Um, we can measure, are we, are we meeting our purpose? What can we do with a leading indicator? Maybe we could do it in training. Maybe with a lagging indicator, we could do it with surveys, customer surveys, or um, in our one-on-one -on -one with our team. I had a really great meeting, a one-on-one -on -one with one of our team members, and I was asking her, so what, what, what about your job do you really like? And then she said something, she goes, I don't think I could do though, that part that you guys do. I said, no, oh, I really think you could. Very good day with that. Well, you know why? Because of this guy said this and this and this and this. And that's what I tell you. Why do you want to do what we do? And I could just see your face as bright as you go, oh, you better think so. Yeah, because you're part of that purpose, you're part of that thing, you can absolutely do it. 
so we can give that gift um, to others. Share, help someone else to find a service. I love this picture. This is a teenager service. That's food french fries, and look how happy she looks. I just found out that Chick-fil-A app and presses in on all of their job applicants. Why? Why do you want to work here? Why is that important? Why would you work somewhere else? This is what we do here. This is important. This is part of one part of Chick-fil-A. You okay with that? Why would that matter? Why would that be part of me? Just give me. It makes me want to kind of just go in and apply for Chick-fil-A job to see if they ask me. Like, do you guys really do this? But they got the customer service, right? They're closed on Sundays, but they're still in DTW. Like, how, how would they get in the airport if they're closed on Sundays? People line up for Chick-fil-A. It is good. It, it, I, I, I would uh, <laughs> okay, so we um, want to help someone share their purpose, and um, remember, it's coming. Uh, I want to make sure I got it like that. Okay. So branding is about people. It's about our people. People make our business. That's where we got to keep focus, too. So now let's get into some examples of how you can put this to action. Some examples of small businesses that have done it. So this is a um, brand blueprint for Amazon Improvement, Dave and Darren Bobby, father-son team, one truck, once upon a time. They grew to 48 employees and they're like, we are losing touch because their purpose was to restore credibility to the industry and improve lives. That, but it wasn't codified, it wasn't written down, it wasn't shared. How do we do this? So they called us and we built this brand blueprint. They care a lot about it. They spent an hour and a half on how we want our employees to feel. Because if we got how we want our employees to feel, now we can measure that. How do we feel? Do you see, are there any of these feelings that are here? We're, we're not meeting that need. How, how are you feeling about this? Are any of these feelings off for you? Um, they've got their key differentiators on there, their purpose, their mission. The danger with doing this is that you can put it in a drawer, put it on a wall, and never look at it. So you really got to make it a part of your business, part of your meeting. Nina Dwyer's they have to say their core values before the, every meeting. If there's more than three people at least, they've got to say the core values before every meeting. So how are we infusing this, becoming part of our DNA? This is our brand people. So you can see how those roots, those intangibles, now inspire and fill the, the other pieces, the marketing pieces, the messaging. So this is their restoring credibility and improving lives is the second part of their, their purpose. Um, became in their marketing. It's all about trust. And their customer satisfaction, measuring how we want our customers to feel. Or if we, they had in another third party review site to make sure they're measuring that. Um, educate customers, their brand architecture. Some of you guys are talking about you want to have divisions, you know, maybe residential, maybe commercial. So do we have divisions? How do we help people find what they want? Understand where they fit with our business. And then uh, family owned is a nice differentiator. Hey, I'm not working with some big, unfeeling corporate people. I'm working with the family. I can trust. I like that. And then their brand promises are things I can guarantee. So they worked on those intangibles. I hope that makes sense. Those roots, it feeds through their purpose. And now all of the things, there's employee training. I'll show you. This is a, we created this life cycle of an Atlas customer. So they were getting so big that they were really concerned that what they built was gonna get diffused, it's gonna get lost. They have a call center now, they got um, Jim in the warehouse, he loads the truck, but he also checks the spas for leaks before he sends them out. They go that extra mile, they're not gonna install a spa that leaks or walk in tub. So here, these are the people that we're serving. This guy is skeptical, he expects a problem, she, they do age in place things. She's, she's afraid, she's older. These are the people that we're serving. And this is the transformation that we make. And then it lists what, how he's proud, he's, his, his home is safer, she can uh, stay at home longer, she's freer, she's happier. So now in the call center, you can be more patient with her and say the number three times. Again, these are the people we're serving. So if you're in any of these areas of the business, 
You know your part. You know how, how empty your factory work all day long? Like a 40 year old restaurant, you start having to do a monotonous job all day long. It feels like building roads going nowhere. But when you see the piece you play, the part you play in developing that transformation, now, now these people aren't in a, an assembly line. Now they're part of the transformation. So that's helping them see that is being used all the time and it doesn't cost anything. It's helping people, it's that gift we give to our people that they're part of the purpose, they're part of that transformation. So are there any questions? Because we want to kind of move now, we've got some more examples, we want to move to a little bit more of the marketing and how you've seen that in design. Are there any questions at this point? Good, you're not very good at saying yes or no. Okay, so the power of symbols. So the reason we think design is so important, it's not just a swoosh, but there's meaning behind it. Oh, you know what, this was the obvious thing. Um, this is an example of why we pulled this out for obvious on a bike. It's not in the street, so I'm gonna use this, you're not gonna see it. But there's commercial buildings, the shine, the A, so we built it in and that was pretty cool. We're gonna show you curves. So curves have been around for 75 years. When we were doing the rebranding, we went to their roots. What do they do? They take old things that everybody else would throw away and they remanufacture them. So when they started, it was carburetors. It was World War II. They couldn't get enough carburetors, so they had to rebuild them and they started a business. So now they're doing alternators. They're doing cylinders, hydraulic cylinders. That's their roots and they're doing it to support people who use their purpose. So here's Kirk's. Um, Adding, so think about this as small business owners, your descriptor, right away, who are you serving? So we're getting back to that purpose statement. Who do we serve? So that people right away can know, we don't wanna waste real estate on our trucks. If we have to, on our, on, on our website, right away, I know, okay, if I'm in this area, in these industries, I need this, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in this. That little bit, the date and the credibility, and then this is their brand architecture, so these are the divisions. Some of you we talked about maybe having commercial and residential. How are you gonna brand that? Also, think about your services. You can brand your service. Um, Quicken Loans, they did Rocky Mortgage. <laughs> it's a mortgage. And maybe they have a project, but it's Rocky Mortgage and it's a logo. So you can do, you can brand your services. We have this special service that we do, and we put a name to it, give it a little look. That makes it more identifiable to people. So there's meaning behind going through that, I won't spend time. So here's the brand blueprint, and their purpose started out long, it's getting tweaked. So now we're brand 2.0, coming around the second year. Let's clean up this purpose statement. Let's say we have maintenance teams who keep our world clean. We serve maintenance teams who keep our world clean. The maintenance team gets raw deals a lot, <clears throat> like credit cards. We're not doing that. So here's all of their stuff, their core values. Um, if you put a verb with your core values, so say um, theirs was um, challenge, tackle challenges. So they'll, they're innovating, they're doing things. So add a verb to it and then you can spell it. When you can spell, make an acronym, it's a lot easier to remember, isn't it? So make an acronym with your core values. Go a little bit harder, a little, push it a little bit to throw another verb in there. What could we do to spell? maybe a company name or our, part of our slogan. Um, and then these guys, so when we came and did the rebranding and we talked to them about the part they play in keeping our nation, because they're serving transit companies all over the country, they're right here in Detroit, they've been in Detroit for 75 years. These people, they, you could see their shoulders, because at first we're like, okay, these marketing people coming in here, showing a new logo, ooh, they were huge. But when we talked about what you're doing, the difference you're making in life, the purpose you're serving, all of you are playing a part. You could just see their shoulders getting bigger, and they're smiling, they're joking around. And then we got this picture at the end. And isn't that a happy crew? <laughs> <laughs> and, well, they also love the company. I mean, they're like, we're, these raises. people are great. They're, they're what did you give them raises too? Yeah, well, <laughs> they, they, they get taken care of. They're, 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 they're friends. Oh, when this happened, they let me do this. Isn't that great? They got to pay me. They're just, so taking care of our people is not just the words, right? It's really there. It's 
in the case of care records. All right, so um, really quickly now, research, independent research, um, Princeton University researchers asked respondents if they would trust somebody just by the look of their faces. So they had conveyor belt strangers going, uh, trust, don't trust, trust, don't trust. How long do you think it took them to decide whether they could trust the strangers? Ten seconds. Seven. <coughs> Generous. And two seconds. It was one tenth of a second. Wow. We call it the blink of an eye. Then when they slowed down and you could stop this conveyor belt anytime you want, they hardly changed their their choice because first impressions are last impressions. Just by a stranger's face. But they can trust that for their business. Because although we don't want to be judgmental, <laughs> human beings are judgmental. But it's good because we're discerning. Right? We want our kids to discern strangers, right? We don't get, there's a good part of being judgmental. So here, let's let you do it. So take this as your conference room, and you've got a VIP prospect coming in Monday. It's Friday afternoon, and the paint is a mess. There's chips all over the wall, and you need a painter. Now, you can only choose a painter by their face. Do you go with painter A or painter B? There were your one friend for a second. So which one did you just shout? A. A. Is there anybody that wants A? Okay, a, c a couple. Why? The creativeness of a logo and we're painting my office. I want it to like, be done by someone's passion. We can create people around. Okay, so that speaks creativity to you. Yeah. Anthony? Looks upscale. Upscale. Well, you got your, that kind of like your brand though, too. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got the crown, the queen, yeah. yeah. Okay, and you? It looks like they took. Oh, not, okay, mm -hmm. good. Get the concentration on it. So, the majority of people chose B. Just throw it out. Why did you choose B? Color. That's right. Color. It, it jumps on the best screen. It what? I'm, I'm partial to anything purple as well. Yeah, yeah. okay. Then <laughs> you're higher. The, the logo <laughs> jumps off the, off the screen at you. It's the lines are, are crisper and cleaner. It looks, it looks a little bit more professional. Okay, um, the main point is that you were making a judgment about a painter just by his face. <coughs> you knew nothing about them. Which painter do you think is more expensive? A. You think A is more expensive? I think B. I think B is more expensive. Most of the people think B is going to be pricier. But that's all right. It's just your, it's just, that's why we got to, it's all right. It was, we are not out to serve everybody. Right? You, you know there are customers you don't want, right? So you just want to attract those customers, right? Just the good customers. A piano tuner comes to your house to tune your piano. They have one note. They sing it, and it starts getting one, one string going. That's all you have to do. Send out this message if you want to connect with that, that ideal customer. So actually, this is a before and after. But they did start, they did, they did. They, um, there are other pieces to this. This is the script title, so going past uh, on a truck quickly, you're not gonna read that as, as easily. This has the descriptor. We talked about putting a descriptor in there. We're small businesses. We need people to know who we're serving right away. And then, of course, the six is pretty cool because there's a, an M and a six in the negative space. So when, when it can have symbolism and meaning, and you go, hey, we take, we take care of the part that you can see and the parts you don't see. That is what this means. Okay, so quickly now, that was your face. Your business is like a person. Um, a person has a name and a face that identifies you, and then you have a personality and style. You have core values, we've covered that, and then you have the value you bring. So think about how you want to interact. Your business is like a person. So when you walk in a room full of people, you know everybody in this room. Oh no, you're in a room full of people, and that person you know walks through that door. Immediately you identify them by the name. And then all the things you know about them. Remember the McDonald's face we saw? Is it, uh, hey, I don't know, I'll take that person to ask for a Sunday. Talk, 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 talk. Or is it fatal? Hey, I want to introduce that person to, right? So in personal branding, some of you work under, um, or you work within a company, and you're developing that personal brand. That's another thing. Um, having colors or certain style is really important for personal brand. So I'm going to fly through this so we don't take you too long. A process. If you think about building this, we're going to go along. The Clarify Great Connect, we're going to 
Get those intangible pieces done, build your brand blueprint. You can do this yourself, that's your brand blueprint. We covered that at length. And then we talked about, we're gonna talk about getting a design. You need a logo design. So I don't know how many of you are needing a logo design or looking at rebranding, but if you are, you wanna know some of this information. There are, there are design principles that you want to make sure are covered. So just going to fiber.com or logosarecheap.com, you might miss that. So um, there are elements, and if you, and if you want this, we're, you can ask us for a roadmap. It's all gonna be here, you don't have to write down anything. But looking at, so remember we talked about the intangibles inspiring everything? So if your intangibles can inspire the design. So this ICR, um, they do robots, they do motor repair, but their CEO, we are talking to a senior sales um, guy who gives us a tour, he goes, wow, this is really awesome. This is great, he goes. We got OEM repair parts here in Detroit. Everybody else is shipping, yeah, shipping over to Japan. We got them here in Detroit, senior. So it was great. So that was an important part, and that was an important part of our being um, a partner for our activity. So when you're looking for a logo designer, ask them to show it to you first in positive and negative space. That's one black one, please. Don't show me color. A lot of those places will show it to you in boss, on light. If you have a web company, do it. They got lights behind it. You want to see color. You want to see it. What is it going to look like on me? Because anything with light behind it can look beautiful. I want to see anything. And are there going to be? Um, there's a lot of logos now that don't have a lot of cool colors and overlays, a lot of action going on, but it's gonna be real tough to embroider on a shirt um, or how you're gonna silk screen it in one color. You want it to look good in positive and negative space, and it will also, you'll be able to determine if it's a good design. It's not in some showy little Photoshop embossed card. Um, and then, then bring in color. Once you've picked your design, bring in color. And then find out um, how, how do you bill? How do you charge for changes? Like we, um, it's unlimited changes because we never want anybody to feel stuck. You got, we're gonna work with you until you love it. But there are companies that you get two changes. Make sure you know when you're shopping, how, what is this process involved? What's my deliverable? So we got a before and then an after. And now, now you need a kit. Right, now you know. I, I met a woman, um, she had a badge on her shirt and she had this cute business card. I said, well, what about your logo? How much is that in your badge? She goes, I paid $7,000 for this logo. The guy who did MGM Grand did that logo. I said, well, how come it's not in your badge? She goes, I don't know how to get there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know, I don't have the files or anything. So you want to get a kit, you want to talk to somebody about the things you're going to need to have digital, um, and then also, we do this introducing. If you are rebranding and you're showing your new logo, tell people why. Remember getting back to the why it matters to them. Um, I want to get to the, to the customer story fast on the line. Um, why it matters. Don't just tell people, hey, you've got a new logo on your website, right? You get that email and go, good for you. I mean, you care, your web designer cares, but nobody else cares. Make it matter for them. It's about the customer. So, and then make sure you've got, we do the standard guide, make sure you've got your color formulas, your design styles, the fonts you're gonna use, because you stay consistent, you will build credibility. Don't be changing it up. We talked about also finding a brand color. Pick a color, stick with it. Don't go ADD on your brand and changing it up. If, if you get bored with it, oh well. It's your brand color, it's beautiful. So I love that orange on that shirt. I thought it stood out. If, if you decide on that color, you stick with that color. It's everywhere. So people see it from afar, you know, that that's yours. And then how you gonna get these vocal files. So we do we do them in, in vertical and horizontal. You don't wanna have to spin your mug around to read your logo. You want it to be nice, you know, we got a vertical orientation, we got a horizontal orientation. Um, and then your brand blueprint. We just took them out, made them look more like a brand. Okay, so there, I'm trying to do that. Now you got your launch, you can, You've got those things to connect with the people you want to connect with. But I want to talk right here about your message. So some of you are really concerned about how do we have that unique message. So write this down, it's not on a piece of paper. Go to um, mystorybrand.com. 
So this is a marketing tool, I'll, I'll walk through it quickly, that um, it's a free tool and all the pieces we've always used in marketing and it'll walk you through um, what we do with our clients, it just puts it in such a nice way, how you can make it happen so that your customer, when they come to your website, they feel like you know the language, you know how to understand their pain. So there's character and a story, but you also as a business owner, we make ourselves out to be the hero. We don't want to be the hero. We want them to be the hero. Uh, Luke Skywalker has his need to be a hero, but he's got some problems. Who does he need? He needs a Yoda. You're the Yoda, right? He's got his problems. I, and the story brand model, you'll work it out. You'll, um, I mean, you can call us. We're here to help. But um, you want to do this on your own. You do it through this and, and just keep tweaking it. Do it with somebody else. So you have the problem and you put it in their words. What's their frustration? What's their frustration with their own problem? What's their frustration in their, in their businesses? Why, what's not aligned that they need this process? What are their frustrations? Brainstorm, just get out the whiteboard. Take your team together, brainstorm. What are the problems, what are the words they use? Don't use our jargon, what are the words they use to identify their problem? And then they need a guide that's you. You're there to say, hey, we've been here before, we know how to take you there, so that it guides you through the plan. All of your websites should have a plan. First you do this, then you do this. Call us for a quote. This is what we'll do. We'll do this, we'll do this, we'll do this. Try to just read things. Have a plan on your website. Get them from A, A7, over to B. That's what you want to do. Maybe it's step over there. Maybe it's a lead generator. Maybe it's something that they can download on your website. So you want to get them connected to you. Oh, this this company, first I completely understand what they do. I'm, I'm here two seconds on their website and I know what they do and I know who they do it for, they do it for me, and they understand me because they know my pain. So you put that language right there on your homepage. And then the call to action, and then you show them how you're gonna get success. So all the story brands show you how to do that. And then the risk. Always make sure on some page, some place on your website, the risk. If you don't call us, your pain is your car thing. That risk just stays there, it's gonna get worse. The risk of not calling us today is forever. Think about it, we all have a risk if we don't do it. So you get this, this is the tool they have. You can fill that out right there and then you can tweak it from there. Run it past a friend or a consultant and build out that, that language for your website. So that's your marketing language. And you can put that, your story, in this. we call it a 16 second story, start up with the problem. My customers have a problem. They're business owners and they, they look like they don't look like they know what they're doing and they don't know how to talk about themselves. We take them through a process to transform them and this is the result. Now they're growing and they're connecting with the customers, their ideal customers. So you can do that. There's a problem out there. So if you stand up at a networking meeting and you say, um, Anthony, you say, he went a problem. They want, they want the great looking beard and they want beautiful skin and they are tired of the chemicals because there's really not very much that FDA is doing with people on your cosmetics. I <laughs> developed my own system, my own process, my own formulas. I'm getting great reviews from people. I have a few here in my car that you can buy today. You can buy two or three. You're gonna have a beautiful beard like mine. Okay, so this is the launch. You keep it consistent. You keep it consistent everywhere you go. It's the right file. Um, you're gonna do videos, you're gonna you're gonna call Will and he's gonna say, I got your logo, I need your logo, I'm gonna always in the corner, always, always, always well, another thing. You want your logo to be, you want to have just a plain knocked out transparent, transparent, so that you can put it on any images, because we're all putting on images, before and afters maybe, images on our websites. You wanna put your logo in the corner so because anybody can grab an image. Make them do some work to Photoshop it out or crop it out. It's your image, you took it, put your logo on that image. You don't want a box. You don't want that white box around it. So get it trans, ask your designer to put it transparent. Yes, like this, right here. On all your images, you get a corner of your videos so that you can own it. And you're possibly putting that impression, that design of people find. And then these are just examples of lead generators. We work with ICR to build some really complicated servo motor checklists and welding checklists 
They're getting leads, they're on core competence, they're getting leads from all over the world. If you build a lead generator on your website, what do people need to know? What are the risks they could have? And you love checklists. Because you can read about anything on a blog post, right, or a white paper. But a checklist is, okay, I'm shopping for rug, whatever. How can we, how can you know if my rug can be safe? Here are four things that we, whatever, 12 things to check. So checklists are great. Once you get their email, now you can stay in touch with them in email. That's a whole other conversation. But at least you've connected with them, right? Hey, I saw you downloaded this at your email sending system. Can you get any help? Can I add you to my newsletter? We're always putting out good information for people, you know, what not to do before we come draw your blood. How happy are people to come see you? But it's better to than go into a clinic, right? Well, they're happy to see me because I bring a different element. So, <laughs> okay, good. Well, and you're beautiful. So that's nice, right? And um, you don't you don't look like a scary book. <laughs> um, okay, question and answers. Questions? Yes. Can I have a card from everyone? Oh, I need a card. If you've got that card, you want to pass it out? Absolutely, yeah. Did you get it? Can I have everybody to touch that? A lot of things that you about, I really could identify with because here at the Better Business Bureau, we that core value thing really improved our um, staff participation and kind of made us more accountable for what we do. Amen. And hopefully, I think I can say things better. I know it may be better. Okay, um, I was the first one to win the core value award, and it was for being committed and driven. So, you know, every month we choose a person and we tell why we think that they meet a core value. And I think that that encourages people. Yeah, it moves to attach a behavior to that yeah. value. Yeah. yeah. So, um, sure. Um, just got a couple of housekeeping items I want to share with you. Um, next month, you all know, it is Cybersecurity Month Global. We will be having a webinar for small businesses. That's you. It's especially for you. It is free, and it is very, very important that you understand how you're affected, especially if you sell your services and your products online. We have invited a guest speaker from um, the Michigan State Police. He works with the Michigan Cyber Command Station here. Uh, his name is Detective Sergeant Matt McMacklin. He's going to be talking with us about what you need to know and what you need to do. He's giving us all the demographics. We want to know what's happening out there. How are people getting hit? People are getting scammed every day. I talk about it every day. I know about it. This morning I was talking with a couple of people and they were like, we didn't know that. How could we know that? What can we do about it? We need to protect our businesses. Your business is your biggest asset. We want to protect it. Okay. Um, secondly, uh, BBB does a recognition of businesses. It's called our Torch Awards. That's where we recognize those businesses for the excellent service they provided to the community. Um, our Torch Awards ceremony is October the 19th from 11 to 1 at Oakland University at the Oakland Center. Um, you're invited, you can purchase tickets for that online. Um, I think they gave you that piece here. Um, the second one is we want you to save the date because this one is a free one. November the 30th, we're having our Christmas party. So we want to invite you, come, food, drinks, the whole nine yards is great. You're an accredited business. That's November the 30th, okay? I'm gonna see you in the place, 4.30 to 7. Okay, uh, one more thing. I got a survey too, but with my survey, if you turn it back in quickly, you're gonna get a gift card, okay? Hers comes with the prize. It comes with the prize. BBB knows how to do it. Do that right quick. 
We're going to give you this uh, gift card here. Raffle off the gift card. We're going to raffle them, <laughs> as Jeff says. Yeah. Help you out. Okay. So they say with 30 gift cards. <laughs> and you know what's so funny? Today when I was at the uh, location, <laughs> I was talking to 70 senior citizens and I had already talked to them about if anybody calls you and talks with you about purchasing gift cards and sending them, it's a scam. And then I turned around and wrapped it off.